Did you hear the one about cattle versus pets? You know, the idea that infrastructure is now immutable and short-lived? Ah yes, if only reality was like that, eh? It's an ideal state, and one we'd recommend trying to get to. It's also the idea behind Terraform. However, with almost every customer we talk to, we find that reality is quite different. They've moved to infrastructure as code, but are still required to maintain servers, as we always have done. We define the desired environment as code in Terraform, but the resulting virtual machines still need configuration changing occasionally, and often they need maintaining. Well, enter Ansible. We're sure you've at least read about and are probably already very familiar with Ansible. So we thought we'd show you how easy it is to bring Ansible into play along with Terraform right in the M0 interface. This gives us the best of all worlds, deployment, configuration, and even maintenance as code, all in the same source control and all glued neatly together in M0. For our example here, we'll keep it simple. The beauty of both Terraform and Ansible is extending a small start into something more detailed is easy. So we'll deploy an EC2 instance using Terraform, then we'll hand over to Ansible using a custom flow. So let's take a look. So here we have our project and we're going to create a new environment from a template. So let's choose this template and I'm going to give it a sensible name because uh, we're deploying in February. Um, in this particular example, I'm going to choose to approve the plan automatically. The nice thing about running this in a production environment, of course, is that you'd be able to uh, leave that unchecked and then the plan would not go ahead without approval. Nice little step. Um, I'm going to leave this on, redeploy on every push to the Git branch, because as I'm sure you will have realized, one of the nice things about running Terraform and Ansible over and over again is they don't do a job if it doesn't need doing. So if we've deployed this infrastructure already using Terraform and we then run this custom flow again, if we've made any changes to the Ansible play, uh, it will just run that as an update. So this is actually a really nice way of doing that bit that I mentioned at the beginning uh, of maintaining an infrastructure. So let's run this and watch what happens. Let's take a quick look at how the custom flow is actually configured. So it's a very simple m0.yaml file that sits inside of the repository that forms the template. And what we've got as part of the deployment are a set of steps. Uh, you can find all the details of this, of course, on the documentation page. But in our example here, before Terraform plan runs, we run a small shell script. Um, code is included in the link below. Basically, this just uh, gets the SSH key that we're going to need to use to connect to the EC2 instance. Um, after Terraform apply has been run, uh, we do the pip install of Ansible. And then after Terraform output, we have the steps to run the actual Ansible play. The get key shell script actually outputs uh, to an environment variable, which is what's picked up on this last line here where we have the private key switch and a key environment variable. You can read about that uh, in the blog post, also linked below. Now, one of the really nice features that I like uh, about this is when you run a plan, you can have it automatically post to Slack. So just here, we see that the uh, deployment has started. And here we go, we've got all the various activities happening. Now, this will take uh, a couple of minutes for Terraform to spin up. So whilst that's bringing up the EC2 instance, uh, I'll fast forward through this section. Nice thing to note is having the cost estimate uh, plugged into the uh, billing section of AWS. You can, uh, you can find out exactly how much this deployment is going to cost. As mentioned in the blog post that you can read alongside this video, link in the description below, uh, you will find uh, a link to the documentation that talks about extending this deployment container so that you can add your own packages into it. Naturally, if you were doing this uh, frequently, you'd probably want to uh, have a deployment container that already has Ansible installed in it to save this bit of time. Whilst that's still running, let's take a quick look at the Ansible play that's going to run when the Terraform deployment is finished. 
So quick belt and braces thing at the beginning, wait for SSH access because Sansible talks over SSH without it being there, won't be able to run the play. So then all we're going to do is just install a few default operating system packages and set up a couple of configuration files. Pretty simple stuff really, but it uh, shows the point. And here we go, the play is running. Let's watch that slack in the background too, so we'll see when it's completed. We'll get a message posted there. Et voila, finished. So if we go back to the environment page here, we've actually got the outputs as printed from Terraform. If you want to check out some more details of what's been done here and have a look at the code, take a look at the blog post that's linked in the description below. And if you've got any feedback or any questions about this, uh, please get in touch with us on Twitter, also uh, listed in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.